Hi, my name is Michael Santos, and we are now on lesson number 30 of our digital economy course. I am the founder of prisonprofessors.com. Uh, we are a nonprofit that strives to help people in prison use their time inside in ways that will allow them to come back to society strong with their dignity intact and with opportunities to prosper. There are many really great organizations outside that do other types of advocacy where they're trying to bring awareness to a lot of the problems with the prison system. That's not my area. My area is about teaching people that regardless of what the prison system does, you've got to find a way to succeed in there. And you've got to find a way to come back to society in a way that can allow you to, to, to achieve all everything that you want to achieve, whatever it is. You know, I don't want to define success for you. I want you to figure out how do you define success yourself and how do you figure out ways to build a pathway to succeed regardless of what the prison system does, regardless of what bad decisions you may have made in the past, regardless of what your current environment is. We know that the prison system isn't always great about providing resources that keep you up to date in learning. That's why we have a nonprofit that tries to create self-contained resources that you could use to develop your own skills that will help you create your own income stream when you come home. And we think this digital economy course is super important because the world is changing and the world is going to continue to change. And if you're in prison today, I want you to be thinking about how will the world change three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, and what can you do to position yourself for success in that changing world? In reality, a lot of people will say, well, the prison system doesn't do this for me, or I don't have access to the internet, and then give you 732 reasons why they can't invest in themselves. I did not find that to be uh, an effective path of preparing for success. I recognize that I always had to work on preparing for myself, and that's one of the reasons I am so grateful to organizations like whitecolloradvice.com and the writingwrongslawfirm.com, two groups that believe in our mission and provide resources for us to try and expand our reach and give stuff away for free to help people in prison realize, hey, you've got to be the CEO of your life. And I've got to thank people like Ryan Salem, who's volunteered with our nonprofit, to assist me in building these courses on something that's so vital, such as the digital economy. But nobody should work harder on, your, on, on preparing you for success than you. And that's why we created this course. This is lesson number 30 in our course on the digital economy. In this course, we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to give you kind of a case study on using the digital economy, which is, you know, with Prison Professor's Talent. I've spoken about that many times, but I'm going to give you kind of a demo on that today. But before I get into that, I just want to read lesson number 30, the text. So here's where we're going to start. As with our introductory course, Preparing for Success After Prison, we stick with our motto of never asking anyone to do anything that we are not doing. That includes building a digital product. While preparing to release this lesson, we're going to build an entire suite of products as follows. An audiobook, a digital book for Kindle, a PDF lesson plan for people in prison who do not have access to digital programs, digital lessons for our partners at Edovo, a soft cover workbook available for purchase on Amazon.com, a non-fungible token, tweets for each lesson, social posts for each lesson, digital marketing campaigns. Combined, these efforts will become a resource for our advocacy efforts. We're striving to persuade stakeholders to modify policies that will incentivize those who pursue excellence. Specifically, we want to persuade stakeholders to authorize more incentives that will allow people to work toward higher levels of liberty through merit. We want to introduce work release programs for people who develop solid release plans and show their commitment to living as law-abiding, contributing citizens. We want to open channels for people in prison to memorialize their journeys so they can more easily advocate for themselves as they strive to recalibrate and succeed upon release. To accomplish those goals, we need to spread awareness about people inside who are working to prepare for success upon release. For that reason, our nonprofit has been building a platform that we call prisonprofessorstalent.com. Like LinkedIn, prisonprofessorstalent.com allows people in prison to showcase the ways that they have used time in prison to prepare for success upon release. 
We are fortunate to have a dedicated team that will populate profiles at prisonprofessorstalent.com. When people showcase how hard they work to prepare for law-abiding, contributing lives upon release, we build resources that allow our advocacy group to, one, persuade stakeholders to see the value of incentivizing a pursuit of excellence. Two, persuade legislators to see the value of expanding the First Step Act so that time credits apply to all people in federal prison and similar programs in state systems. So we want to persuade state and federal stakeholders on the importance of expanding work release programs. We want to persuade citizens on the reasons why we should reform laws that have led the United States to incarcerate more people per capita than any other nation. We're inviting participants to join these mutually beneficial advocacy efforts. We believe they work on a macro level and on a micro level. On a micro level, each individual who uses prison professor's talent to memorialize the ways that he or she is using time in prison to prepare for success, the individual builds an asset that will prove valuable in the digital economy. It would be easy to use this resource to open job opportunities or to create assets that can convert into an income stream through digital publishing. On a macro level, if prisonprofessorstalent.com could feature 10,000 active users, more people would become aware of the need for reforms that allow people to work toward earning freedom through merit. Such programs would allow more people to emerge from prison with their dignity intact and with more opportunities to thrive regardless of the job market. In lessons to follow, we'll continue offering more insight on the digital economy. Those lessons will include examples of people who use the digital economy to thrive, and they will offer insight on how asset values change over time. We encourage participants to record their progress by sharing what they have been learning on personal profiles that they built. And that's the reason that all of our lessons conclude with these three critical thinking questions, such as this one. In what ways have you shown that you have developed an extraordinary and compelling adjustment strategy through prison? Two, how will stakeholders know that you are a worthy candidate for the highest level of liberty at the soonest possible time? And three, what strategy have you implemented to build support that will help you transition to society successfully? Now, as an advocacy initiative, Prison Professors encourages the exploration of blockchain technology to create positive social changes, such as improved access to education. But we invite you to be a part of our initiative by documenting all that you are learning through our masterclasses on the digital economy. So please share your story and responses through the manner that works best for you. Anybody can send an email to interns at prisonprofessorstalent.com. If you can't send the email yourself, have a family member send it. And in the digital economy, I mean, under the subject line, write digital economy. So we know that you're working through this course. You could also send it a letter. Just send it through the regular mail to Prison Professors Care of the Digital Economy course at 32565 Golden Lantern Suite B-1026 in Dana Point, California at 92629. If you have access to the Adovo platform, um, we work with Adovo, and you know you, you should be able to work through that and respond to the questions right there. But I, we don't know. I don't always know what's going on in the prison system and so on. Now, I always tell you, I will never ask you to do anything that I didn't do, and I'll never lie to you. I've shown you my own efforts to learn about the digital economy, but also to invest in the digital economy. I wrote this particular lesson on February the 27th, 2024, at 1.02 in the morning, and uh, because I get up early sometimes, and I'm just thinking about, I mean, I may have been out of prison for 10 years, but in my head, I'm still thinking about guys in prison. And at that time on the Coinbase exchange, Bitcoin was valued at $57,015 a coin. And those who've been following along from the beginning of the course know that I had made, as of that date, a total investment of $192,202.76 to purchase four Bitcoins. But the total value of those coins on that given date of February 27th, when I wrote this lesson, was $228,624.80. So that represented a gain on my investment of $35,800 in less than a month. Now, of course, I would only get that gain if I sold my coins, and I didn't want to sell my coins. Instead, I bought a lot more coins. And I share that information with you 
because I want you to see that I'm never telling you to do something I didn't do. I am always learning, and then I'm with what I learn, I'm striving to build to do something that's important to me, and that's to change the prison system. From, from uh, Mahatma Gandhi, I learned that we should all strive to be the change that we want to see in the world. And it's easy to use that phrase as a, um, you know, just a buzz phrase. But it's another thing to live by. I live by it. And I show you how I live by it, by never asking you to do anything I didn't do. I share my, my screen with you and show you, hey, you can see what, that I'm always watching asset prices. You can see the value if I go to portfolio right here and click on it. You could see how my assets are changing because I no longer own four Bitcoins. Now I own 10 Bitcoins in various different platforms and Ethereum and XRP. And I've traded other different types of altcoins. And I'm always trading those coins. I'm always looking and saying, okay, what's the price? How am I educating myself on the market? How can I learn what's going on today? I can look at different asset tools to say, okay, let me let me stay ahead of the game and, and understand, okay, how are prices changing every day? And in what ways can I use this knowledge of investing in myself and developing my understanding to build an income stream out of nothing? How am I going to do that? How, uh, how am I going to use the lessons that I learned in prison to advance my pathway to success? Well, this was this was the the this is the website of our of my nonprofit where I'm showing, trying to bring awareness for self-help because the prison system isn't always there to, to provide resources for people. And, and we need to find examples of people who are succeeding regardless of what the prison system does. And I need to demonstrate, I'm never asking anybody to do anything I didn't do. I wrote all those, most of those books while I was in prison. All of that was a strategy to build my pathway for success. I had to sow those seeds for success while I was serving a 45-year prison term. And it's what I mean when I'm telling you, you've got to be thinking about your life before sentencing, after sentencing, and you've got to learn how to self-advocate. That's what we try and teach at prison professors, is we try and show you how to advocate for yourself. And then, you know, I feature all different types of people that are calling and giving testimonials and and talking about how we've changed their life and, and and so on and so forth. And, you know, you've got to be thinking about this as well. What are you doing? Well, one of the other things that I show is, is I've built this nonprofit page that talks about our mission of what we're trying to do. And that is to help justice impacted people emerge successfully and end intergenerational cycles of recidivism. In order for me to do that, I've got to create digital assets that help people understand the various platforms we build and what how they work together to try and change the system and improve lives on a micro level, meaning the individual. I hope that you're developing lessons and knowledge that will change your life on a macro level to change the institutional mindset of how we should incentivize a pursuit of excellence on a legislative level to change lawmakers so that they bring things. And I never ask anyone. I, you can see I've used the digital economy all the way through my journey. I'm always showing people and, and memorializing what I've done. While I was in prison, you could see I documented all my journey from 1987 to 1988 to 89 all the way through. And then I provide them with links so that people can see how did people like Nelson Mandela, Victor Frankl, Malcolm X, Frederick Douglass, how did those people influence my decisions to earn a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, become a published author, get married in prison? All of this is digital. And because it's digital, I'm able to use it as an asset to generate more income streams and more business opportunities. You know, but I'm in a different stage today than I was when I first got out of prison. You know, I've built businesses, I've, I've earned money, I've lost money. And, you know, I'm just at a different stage so that I can focus on what I want to do. And what I want to do is help more people emerge successfully. And that's why we launched Prison Professor's Talent. It's where you can document your own story by building your own profile of showing 
how you are working to build a better life. And I, I'm, I'm really thrilled to be able to see so many people using this tool in ways that we could show administrators how we're contributing to change the culture of prison. And, and I try and do that by showing them, you know, hey, here, I'm not asking you to do anything I didn't do. I'm always advocating. There's the director of the Bureau of Prisons and the assistant director of the Bureau of Prisons. And we're working together that are trying to change, uh, you know, to help those people see the value of incentivizing excellence, just like we learned from Nelson Mandela or Viktor Frankl or so many other people. I'm trying to show how the importance of planning, and I'll show these efforts of me teaching inside of prisons where I'm touring the country and trying to help people see you've got to believe in yourself and you've got to invest in yourself. And I show the whole planning process of what leads to me developing relationships with the Bureau of Prisons, the very agency that once held me in confinement. Um, I try and validate it by showing a Wikipedia page or what the influence Frederick Douglass had on me the importance of building a re comprehensive release plan and teaching in universities and being the change that we want to see. I try and show how I work with organizations and, and business leaders to get them to see why we should invest in building resources that will lead to second chances to, for people to build their own pathways to success. All of that is an ongoing effort to change the way we as a society influence prison. We want to show examples of resilience, of making plans, setting priorities, creating tools, developing tactics, building resources, measuring progress, just like my friend Halim Flowers did, or my friend Adam Clausen did. All these guys were serving Tommy Walker did. They were all serving multiple life sentences at one point, but today they're home. Why? Because they spent their time in inside preparing for success after prison. And that's what we try to feature here with all of our people that go through our programs. It's why we strive to work with federal and state prisons all across the country, because we want people to see the best possible outcome. And we would never ask you to do anything that we are not doing. This is the way that I built a pathway to emerge from prison strong with my dignity intact. And it's what we want for everybody that's going through our courses. So we do hope that we will hear from you, that you will send us an email or communication in some kind of way so we could use your story as an example of excellence. Be pursuing excellence. Avoid the negativity of prison and focus on how you could reach your highest potential and never make excuses. That's a motto of prison professors. We'll never lie to you. We'll never ask you to do something that we did not do. But you've got to pursue excellence every day. I can't succeed in my job of trying to advocate for reforms if you don't do your part. So please do your part and memorialize your journey. And if it makes sense to you, it doesn't cost you anything to use our Prison Professors Talent Program. If you have financial resources, you might want to build your own website like I did. But you, what you can't do is be the type of person that's filled with happy talk and excuses. The world is filled with homeless camps that uh, people who are used to be in prison are now living there with mental health challenges and problems getting into the job market because they didn't use their time in prison to prepare for success. We want you spending every day working to prepare for success, and that's why I'm making a personal plea to you to start sowing seeds today for what you want to become in the days, weeks, months, years, and decades ahead. It's the reason I want to thank our sponsors at whitecolloradvice.com and why I want to thank our sponsors at the law firm, writingwrongslawfirm.com. Both of these groups um, believe in our mission and they support our mission. And if you need those resources, I'd ask you to do your own due diligence, but reach out to them and, and find out if they can help you. I'm telling you, you've got to learn how to help yourself. That's what self-advocacy is about. That's what I had to do while I was in prison. And it's what made all the difference in the world for me. And I really want to thank my collaborator on this program, Ryan Salem. I couldn't have done this without Ryan's expertise and guidance. He's done, he's lived this path. It's how he became an ambassador of cryptocurrency. And it's how he's going to uh, continue contributing to the world in positive ways. So I just want to say at the end of this particular series, 
as the founder of Prison Professors. On behalf of my collaborator, Ryan Salem, and our entire team at Prison Professors, I just want to say we believe in you. I hope you believe in yourself as well. Thanks so much for being a part of our community.